Okay, for the beginners workshop, we prepared something uh, new. Alfred uh, takes the role of the teacher and I will take the role of the student. And so we will both share our screen and you can switch be between the teacher's screen and the student's screen. And uh, I will pose questions. And as I said before, this is really a beginner's workshop. We want to uh, make JSX Graph attractive for, for those who aren't familiar with the software. And we will start uh, from the scratch with an empty board and we will create some interesting objects. Uh, for those who are familiar with it, uh, I think uh, this is perhaps uh, a little bit too easy, but uh, tomorrow we will start with the advanced workshop and I think this is the right thing for everyone. So uh, Alfred will start sharing his screen and he will tell us how to prepare, what do we need for the workshop. And uh, if you have questions, please uh, post your questions in the chat, but you can also activate your microphone. And I will post questions as well, because now I'm a beginner using JSX Graph for the first time, and Alfred is the teacher. Please, Alfred, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Carsten. Um, yeah, it's I'm happy that you are interested in programming JSX Graph, and heartily welcome you to the workshop. And for, for all participants, um, I prepared notes for the workshop, which can be downloaded from this discussion forum. And I call it pre-workshop version because hopefully I will, I will uh, add some small things. Uh, and then after the workshop, I will uh, put the final version to the, uh, to the Moodle. And yeah, let, let me start. Let me start with some uh, with the setup. What do you need? The minimum requirements to uh, to program JSX Graph is well, it's first a web browser, and here it doesn't really matter which one: uh, Firefox, Chrome, Edge, Safari. Others, um, nearly every web browser is is uh, well that is uh, possible. And the, the the differences are not not too large. Okay, and I guess you have a web browser already installed. Uh, the next thing is you need a text editor. A text editor is where you just type in text, and uh, this text is stored on the on your computer exactly like you typed it in. So no no formatting, nothing. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and there, there are countless free uh, text editors available on the on the web. Um, Carsten and, and I we we decided to use today Microsoft Visual Studio Code. It's it's free, uh, but you can use anything else. Uh, but um, well, the least thing it should support uh, is syntax highlighting, though this helps a lot. Going more pure than syntax highlighting is is might be a little bit frustrating. And here's the link uh, you can download Visual Studio Code from well, uh, well Google and 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 uh, download it. And of course you need an oh of course uh, uh, you need an internet connection for our uh, workshop. But in general, you don't even need an internet connection to develop JSX Graph. So, um, of course, it would be helpful uh, if you have some uh, knowledge about HTML, and even better if you know something about JavaScript. So HTML is the language how to format a website, and uh, JavaScript is the programming language of the, uh, which is used uh, in, in a website. And JSX Graph is nothing else than JavaScript code uh, in the form of a library. So, 
but uh, you can get uh, quite far without knowing too much JavaScript. Um, actually, for for a standard construction, you need you need the basic JSX graph syntax, and and that's it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, after this workshop, uh, there will be a talk by by Kinga about using AI to to program JSX graph. And this is a very interesting topic, but uh, I suppose you need at least a basic knowledge about JSX graph so that you can use a, the AI output um, uh, to create uh, interesting work uh, constructions. So, um, more information for beginners. Uh, I have it listed here. There's a YouTube video by Igor Pesek from Slovenia. Um, he he does also a very basic uh, workshop. And um, the first half of our workshop is more or less is quite, quite related to his workshop. Then uh, there's a Chase Escraf handbook. Um, on the web, an online resource where you can, um, uh, well, where programming chase extra, the basic things are explained, and we will we will start more or less along this this uh, handbook. And then, if you want more examples, there's our wiki and our examples database. There are hundreds of examples. And uh, all together, all come with a source code, though you can learn and adapt to your, to your needs. <clears throat> and finally, there's the API documentation where all the details are explained. This is uh, where AI learns from. Okay, so let's start. The first uh, uh, task is you have to download this page one uh from the from the Moodle. I don't know why it's uh yeah. So uh you have to go to the to the Moodle uh to the Moodle and download um all th uh, the best thing is to download all the three HTML pages we will use in this workshop. Okay. So, Carsten, please try it. <laughs> where where was that at again? Sorry. Pardon me? Can you repeat? Where right. was those files at? Is in the Moodle, but where in the Moodle? Uh yeah, it's in the in the in the in the forum, though there's this discussion. Let's go to the to the homepage. So there's discussion our workshop and the template files. And uh, please store them in, in on some in some folder on your computer. Okay, Alfred, I downloaded these files. What's next? Okay, in my in my setting, I have uh, created a folder W, and there I have these three files. And uh, yeah, and now the best thing is uh, yeah now now the the first thing is we uh, from your Windows Explorer or your Finder in on, on the Mac, we drag this page into the web browser. Uncommand line 14 and it works. So very nice. Uh, okay, now I have the same view, uh, the same view as you, Alfred. This works. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. So does it work? Now I have a border around the Chase XGraph board. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it should look like this, something uh, like this. And um, so we have some, some navigation bars, a copyright notice, and this, this border around the... Um, um, around the around this chase is of element such that everything now now it works so uh let's see does it work for everybody mm -hmm. for me it works that is what i see okay so this is the most difficult thing and um First, uh, to, to introduce our workflow, now we can add HTML to this uh, page. HTML is, for example, uh, the uh, header of, ty of type one, H1, and there you can write um, uh, my first example. Okay. Then uh, you have to, so uh, this dot here shows us that uh, there's a change in the document. We have to save it. I always do this control S or command S in, in, on the Mac. And then I'm going to uh, Google Chrome and do a reload. And then it shows my first example. Okay, fine. Uh, if you want to see the student's view, please switch to my uh, sc screen sharing, to Carsten's screen. If you want to see the teacher's view, please use Alfred's screen sharing. Okay, so so what did we, uh, what did we do? <clears throat> um, we have uh, in uh, line number 11, we have this ex uh, this diff element. Diff is a division, it's just a rectangle. And um, <clears throat> now this uh, division has uh, three, three arguments, an ID, a class, and style. And uh, so if you know some HTML, you know with style, you can set the, the dimension of this box. And this, so this box is, uh, the width is 600 pixels and the height is 600 pixels. Yeah, and then we add some style to it, some, some style sheet, uh, CSS. Um, uh, it's called JXG box. And this is defined in this, uh, uh, CSS file which we link to in number uh, line number six, and this this one uh, creates uh, this uh, this border. You can probably uh, take this out again. Yeah, and uh, if there's no JavaScript at all, then you just see a white rectangle or square in this case with a border. Okay, and uh, now we want to we want to uh, construct chase X graph in this in this uh, square. Uh, we, we call it uh, the board. We want to create the board where we construct uh, elements to. And uh, for this, we need um, one uh, chase X graph command. It's called JXG. It's very complicated. JXG, JSSGraph, init board, and, and then some parameters. I will put it into the, into the chat. Okay. Uh, this is 
probably one of the most if we if we uh, can do this we are very far so what does it do well it creates as you can see uh, if i reload oh i have to store uh, I, it it creates um well it creates something inside of this uh border so and uh there are th there are two parameters at the moment uh though we have this this string and uh some commands inside of this uh curly brackets and this string means uh we want to construct all the JSX graph output in in a in an element called box uh, in an element with the ID box and the ID is so we link that means we link this ID this this diff with the ID box with our JSX graph board so. And this tells us everything which will be constructed will be in this division. And uh, okay, and then uh, we have the second parameter with the curly brackets. Um, there we construct. Uh, we we tell we tell JSX graph about. Uh, the coordinate coordinate system of our construction. Um, it tells we tell we, uh, by giving the bounding box, and the bounding box means the upper left border, the upper left corner of our construction has coordinates minus five six, and the lower right corner has. Uh, um, coordinates six minus five. Okay, we can make this uh, more clear if we add a further attribute, namely axis true. And you note in this curly brackets, we have to, uh, it's, it's a key value store. So we have to give a key followed by a, a, a by this, uh, yeah, what is the English name? I don't know it. Yeah, this, this one, and some value, and uh, all these key value pairs are separated by comma. It's a colon. Colon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so if it if it. Uh... <clears throat> If we reload again, now we see something more. And you see the upper left corner is at minus 5, 6, and the lower right corner is at uh, 6, minus 5. Okay. And we can change this, for example, to, let's say, 1, minus 2. And then it looks like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Carsten, what's everything okay? Okay. Yeah. So I will I will not use this axis true any longer for for the moment because um uh, um we are doing Euclidean geometry at the beginning, and there are no coordinates. So, nearly no coordinates. So, uh, I'd say axis falls, and the axis disappears again. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, now the next step is... Uh, now we want to create some... Them, uh, them point, uh, some, some element, and we start with a point. And the easiest uh, way to do it is like this, or the way to do it is it like this. Um, we call the method create from our board. 
So this is the board. Uh, though we have access to this drawing area via our variable variable board. And this has a method, this has a method create. And uh, <clears throat> uh, create comes with needs three parameters, namely the, the type of objects you want to create, then uh, parameters and attributes or options or again with curly parameters but you this is optional so uh, we can uh, oh, we can do it like this we uh okay as i said it's it's optional the last parameter and uh if we do this and reload it then we have a point so I will put this into the chat. Okay, now I have a point A on my board. Can I change the name of the point, Alfred? Yeah. For first, uh, the your intended users, they can drag this point, or you can it too. And if if it's dragged, then uh, you see you see some coordinates which are displayed. Okay, so you can drag it around. So it's a dynamic construction. Yeah, uh, you can change the the name by uh, with the attribute name, uh, name colon and some string. What do you want? My first point. <laughs> okay. And we do a reload. My first point. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this was successful. Now we do a second point. Um, here, I did something, uh, it's more, more or less the same, but uh, I stored uh, this point in a variable called Q. So we, uh, though I will have later access to this point, I can use it. Um, okay, and then it looks like this. This point again has, uh, we have for points, we have an automatic numbering system, so it starts again with A, because uh, A is not used yet. Okay. Okay, this was successful, and uh, we... Um, I will... I will uh, comment it out. Construction. So these two slashes, uh, these uh, two slashes uh, make a JavaScript ignore the rest of the line. So it's commented out, so yeah. Now we do the second construction. So now the board is already again empty. Yeah. Okay, now we we are successful so far, so we, we try to construct a line. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we can do it simply like this. or one way, there are several ways to construct a line. Um, we say, uh, we tell the board to create an element of type line. 
and uh, it uh, should be defined by two coordinates, namely minus three one, three minus one. Okay, this is the line. And you can drag this line. So, and, and here, here's a slight, a slight difference between uh, desktop computers and mobile computers. Uh, with a desktop computer or with a laptop or with a mouse, I can I just can drag uh, this line and uh, the line is translated. Uh, if you have can uh, modify your object with two fingers, then you can rotate the line if you use two fingers. Okay. So uh, now we want uh, this more, make this a little bit more transparent that the line is defined by two points. And we do it like this. Uh, so we construct a second line. Uh, by first constructing two points, similar as before, as in our first construction. And then we uh, tell uh, the board to create a line uh, through the points P and Q. So P is the variable, variable uh, containing the first point and Q contains the second point. And I will post this too. And it should look like this. And now also the desktop users can rotate or uh, move the line uh, in which way they want. Alfred, one student's questions, uh, uh, question, is it possible to uh, use this on uh, touchscreen devices as well the, with, with these two points? So yes. I can rotate the line with two fingers as well. Yes, yes. So you can, uh, so uh, the, the, there's no restrictions on the points A and B. And uh, if you just rotate, uh, you put your fingers somewhere, wherever you want, on two arbitrary uh, positions on the on the line. You can rotate them because the points are free; um, they are not restricted. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, now we do a, a third construction. Uh, I'm deleting the then our third construction, so I will comment out this uh, the second construction. And so okay, it's nearly the same, the same line as before. Uh, okay, now we want to play around with this uh um with these attributes. So for example, you can say stroke with stroke with uh, actually the, the, the writing doesn't matter. So you can use capital letters or camel uh, writing or 
or small capitals, it's uh, small characters, it doesn't matter. So stroke width, uh, you can say five, for example, which means the line, uh, the stroke width of the line will be five pixels. Then you may can say, uh, sorry, we have to do use your comma. Then we can say stroke yeah, straight first false. What does it do? Well, it uh, it starts a line at at the first point at A, and um, yeah, so it's it's a ray. And uh, you can imagine, uh, you can also have a straight last, and set it to false. Then all this, the, 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 then it's a segment, it ends at B. <clears throat> um, another, very helpful attribute or very often used attribute is fixed. This is uh, by default set to false and we can set it to true. Fixed true means I cannot longer drag this uh, line. And then it's at straight last to true again. Um, uh, but, but Alfred, is this right? I can change uh, the points A and B? What does it mean? You, uh, I, if I drag A or B, the line changes. But what, what what's the meaning of the fixed here? Uh, the, uh, so if if fixed is false, so if fixed is false, uh, then I can drag the line. Ah, okay, with within the line. Okay, and and uh, so yeah. if it's true. Uh, I still can uh, drag B around and uh, the line follows accordingly, but I cannot drag the line. Okay, thank so you. So maybe what, what we want is uh, to have this also for um, for the point A. For example, then I cannot drag A2, but uh, so I have a rotation. The only thing is I have a rotation. Okay, thank you. And uh, maybe some more features are, um, I can uh, set a dash style, for example, dash equal three, uh, and then the line is dashed. So there are several dash styles. And uh, for the for the point, uh, there's also a style named uh, and the attribute is called face. So for example, we can do it like this. In the API documentation, I won't, won't explain it in detail. Uh, the possible faces are listed. So uh, maybe we, are, we can hear uh, size 10, so it's a big point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, so there are, there are nearly countless, countless options how to how to uh, 
construct <clears throat> how to um, change uh, the construction by, by changing attributes. Uh, this is very flexible. Okay, then now we, uh, we uh, go to the second Second example, okay. also here I have to, add this uh, rel style sheet. Okay, um, it's more or less the same, otherwise it's more or less the same. Uh, it just tells us here page two in the title. Okay, and now we want to have, uh, want to construct circles. Uh, sorry, what I forgot was to push this example into the chat. Okay, okay now to the second page. We start again uh, with two points. Oh. We start again with two points and we explicitly name them then A and B. Uh, in this case, it would have they would have been named A and B uh, anyhow, but uh, just want to show it again to you. And then we go to page two. Okay, here's A and B. And now we create a circle through. Yeah, what does it mean through? Uh, so we create a, a circle uh, first we copy it into the to the chat <clears throat> okay so this will create a circle and now the center of the circle will be the point uh, P, so the variable P, and uh, the radius is defined by us by the second point Q. Okay. And the stroke width is uh, is uh, three, and the color of the stroke is red. Okay, and now uh, this is also dynamic. So by manipulating B, the circle changes. Okay. Alfred, is it also possible to fill the circle with a color? Yes. Uh, good question. So we have fill color, uh, let's say, well, and, and uh, for colors, you can have this, uh, these names, but uh, you can also supply an uh, RGB uh, string, which you can extract from every, every uh, paint program. So for example, we can construct uh, a yellow or uh, use a yellow fill color. I have to save. Okay, thank you. Now it's yellow. If, for many of you, it will be too much. So we can reduce the opacity. And let's say opacity 0 0.5. So it's a, it's a value between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, zero means fully transparent and and uh, one means solid. So it's like this. 
Yeah, and <clears throat> yeah, uh, one more question, one more. Um, yeah, one more circle. Just to show you what uh, there are many different possibilities. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, here's the second circle. Now it uh, the parameters are uh, a string with the name so a B. That means the center will be uh, a point with the name B, capital B. And the radius will be set to the fixed value 1.8. And then we have some fill color and again a fill opacity. Okay. Save and then reload. And here's, uh, here's the second circle and uh, you can uh, see very well the, the opacity. And if you uh, if the or if the user go highlights uh, the circle, then the the fill color changes and the opacity. This can be also adjusted by highlight fill color. Uh, let's say let's do black. Okay, yeah, this is maybe too much. So we also have to ha uh, set the highlight. I light fill opacity to 0 0.2. Okay, now it's the filling is switching to a very transparent black. And Alfred, this is right. I can't change the radius of the second circle. Yes, it yes. is fixed at the moment. Uh, or oh, we did it like this, so it's fixed to one point eight. Okay. Well, actually, I'm not really sure if. Uh, can anybody use two fingers? Maybe with two fingers. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, now we go to the third example. And here we also have to change uh, or reintroduce this rel equals style sheet. Style sheet. Okay. And now we go to function plotting. <clears throat> well, uh, so first I will try if it works without anything. Yeah, okay. And now uh, access, uh, using access is a good idea. Okay, and um, the first thing we can do is um, creating a sine curve. So uh, we will want to create a function graph, and uh, the and we supply the function term as a string. Okay, so the function of the sine curve, and um, by default it runs uh, from the left 
edge to the right edge of the board. Uh, but you can adjust this and say it uh, goes from minus three to three or something like this. Then it's like this. Okay, so Wigand writes with two fingers, it is possible to manipulate the circle uh, on, on, on a touch screen. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay, so I will... Uh, Post this here. Okay, so this is a string. Um, why do we allow strings here? Uh, the usual way <clears throat> or another way would be to uh, to do it like this. Namely, use a JavaScript function. So, uh, a JavaScript function is like this. It's it's a called an arrow function in JavaScript. So it maps uh, x to x times x, and then it uh, the construction looks like this. So here's the 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 red red uh, graph is uh, the parabola. Okay, so this is a JavaScript function. Um, why is it better? Why is it sometimes uh, more convenient to use uh, um, the the string notation because this doesn't work. Sign is not a is not an, a, a JavaScript function. It doesn't exist. It uh, just exists with a math module, and then you you have to. To, to supply this, but or, uh, sign using signers in uh, the sign in, in, in JavaScript directly uh, would be this expression and this is ugly. So uh, it's better to use uh, the string notation. And yeah. Copy it. So, and then it looks like this. So, um, <clears throat> so, uh, I written it in, in the in the workshop notes. So what what strings are allowed here? Um, what's allowed is uh, is a, a command in our language Jesse code, which we develop, developed uh, around JSX graph. And um, <clears throat> there you can put in the 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 most uh, well nearly all uh, available uh, math functions which are available in JavaScript and some more, and uh, this makes it easy to create something like a function plotter. And for this, I want to show you our examples database. It's linked here. So here's a, a another example together with source code. So uh, if you want to give a function plotter to your students, you you want to input uh, them sign on that and not math.sign. So here you can plot this function and uh, yeah, add something else, add tangent and so on. Um, and uh, with this Jesse code language, this expression is uh, converted into into a JavaScript function internally. So uh, this is why it's, it, we need this because students want to input sine and cosine and so on. Yeah, okay, back, uh, 
back to our example. Um, Alfred, there was a uh, there's a question in the chat. How can I use pi uh, for a function? Yeah, uh, you can. Uh, Use capital Pi. Okay. And uh, this may, might uh, be a little bit ugly. You can use Euler for, for E. Okay. So it's pi, uh, I will type it pi and all Okay, so, uh, but uh, we want to have a JSX graph dependent on some, on, uh, so we want to, this is a fixed uh, fixed function graph. We want to the, the, the user should manipulate it somehow, and one possibility is to use a slider. So what is a slider? Oops. Oh, we copy it. So this has quite a lot of uh, par uh, parameters, but I will first uh, show it to you. So here's the slider. Uh, let's, uh, it uh, conflicts with this label, so I will do it like this so what's what's happening here so the slider like we supplied it here uh starts at the left from start starts uh from at the point minus four or five and ends at the point minus five, minus one five so maybe we cho change this to one one and five so uh now the slider runs from minus one five to one five. This is just the position of this sliding uh, line. Okay, then <clears throat> uh, we have to uh, supply information about the range of the slider. So uh, the, uh, the slider should run from, should take the values minus 10 to 10 and the initial value should be one. So it runs from minus 10 to 10, and the initial value is one. And uh, finally, the name of the slider is, is aim. So we have a name and the variable, and store the slide in the variable s. Okay, now, We want to, so first uh, I will copy this uh, static functions, function graphs, and copy them and make them dynamic. So, uh, and I will change the order. Oh, so it's still the same. Okay. Now uh, we uh, want to make the parabola dependent on this slider. And uh, so we want to multiply this x squared by the value of this slider. And we can do it like this, uh, S. Now we want to access the value of the slider. It's a, it's a method called value times 
x times x. And then, oh, oh I want, uh, yeah, we can leave it. This is the old uh, one. Uh, maybe I, I will write here a, a black to see the difference. So the parabola depends on the slider. Okay, I will put, and this is dynamic. Carsten, could you follow me? I don't hear you. Sorry, I, I switched off the microphone. It works. I have a slider and a dynamic parabola. Great. Uh, okay. One question. Uh, do I need the name of the slider? No, so far not. But uh, now I want to make this sine curve also uh, dynamic. And uh, so Jesse code or this expression doesn't know JavaScript variables out of the box. Uh, so here the name comes in handy. So we can use here so in this string, we take the name of the slider. And now we do it like this. Let's do it like this. A, I want to change the frequency like this. Okay. Oh, okay. And for this, I need, I need uh, the name. Um, maybe for the beginners, it's also for, for every developer, it's helpful to have some output in this uh, uh, JavaScript console. For this, I go to in German, it's untersuchen. Then I get this console uh, like this. And uh, so if I'm writing here S, then it's a it's a bug. It's an error, and uh, Jesse code will not cannot cope. So here we we become an, a problem. It doesn't work. Okay. No. So if something doesn't work, it's always a good idea to open this console uh, to see what's happening. Yeah, and finally, uh, sometimes we want to display texts. Um, creating texts is, uh, well, also quite straightforward. So text elements. Uh, so we have a, <clears throat> um, well, a position, x coordinate, uh, uh, y coordinate, and then a text. Like this. And this comes with many, uh, many attributes. For example, you can give a CSS class or set of C CSS classes to format this text and and yeah, and you can also use math checks or ktech in in this text. So there are a lot of possibilities. Yeah, but uh, this is nice. But even nicer if let's say uh, a text would be dynamic, and this can be done the following way. Okay. 
Yeah, um, we, we can also supply um, a function for the value of the text. So we can supply su an arbitrary function. The only thing is what it returns should be a number or even better, a, a string. And we do this um, here in, in a JavaScript way. Uh, this can be also, this can only be done in the JavaScript way. Um, uh, so we supply some text, let's say f uh, at uh, 2 equals, and then we compute the value of, of, our, of our parabola at uh, position 2. Okay, and um, then it looks like this. Yeah, we should change the position minus three minus three okay uh yeah the position uh, the value of uh f f uh, at the position two is four if uh a equals one and then uh we get different values and um Let's say we do it, uh, give it a little bit more space like this. And now it has uh, maybe too much uh, digits. And we can do it like this. We can uh, add parentheses and say two fixed. This is JavaScript. We want two digits. Uh, <clears throat> Ah, that that's a very uh, flexible way of doing dynamic texts. Yeah, and uh, again, even if it's dynamic, uh, it can be used with math checks or uh, K tag. Okay, thank you very much, Alfred, uh, for, yeah, for then, uh, this interesting uh, workshop. <laughs> yeah, so there's a last question by. Oh, there's a question by Matthias. How can you keep a text or slider in the same position on the screen when zooming? Well, the problem is this. So when we zoom, uh, the position moves, or I can, with, uh, with pressing the shift key, I can pan the text and you can, you can add, Let's do it for the last one. You can use the, the attribute frozen. And then it's frozen. Okay. I will put it in the chat too. Okay, so we can go, could go on for hours and hours and days. And um, I hope you found it interesting. And Carsten, I hope you learned something. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it looks very interesting. Me. And I, I think I need uh, the next weeks to learn JSX Graph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Thank you, thank you very much, Alfred. So, uh, so are there any questions to Alfred? Or to Carsten? Is there any documentation on where all this stuff is, like all the attributes of everything and all the all that stuff? Yes. Uh, so Andreas had put it in the chat. So there's this chess uh, 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 So you can also. It, it doesn't matter if you type in JSSCAF uni by Roy DE or jsscaf.org. It's uh, the exact same uh, uh, page. And um, 
And uh, Alfred, so perhaps you can share your screen again. Yeah, I will, I will type in the chat. Uh, so, yeah. So Andrea said, put it in the chat. So, uh, yeah, I will share it again. So if you go to the Chase Escoff homepage, um, there's this huge up API reference and uh, there, um, there you get the attributes and 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 so on. <clears throat> and um, many attributes, for example, you can uh, this was just by chance. You can take, uh, you can change uh, the, the arrow head of a line, <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, you can. Uh, at, there are two arrow heads. I mean, in the in the beginning, it's the first arrow, and at the end, the last arrow, and you can you, you can change them, and and yeah, there are countless options. Meanwhile. Countless attributes, and uh, as Andreas uh, uh, also showed in the in the chat, there's just is of org share, and there's also also the wiki. So there's share with examples, and examples means uh, this is something more elaborate. Uh, so uh, a couple of of lines. For example, how you can uh, change labels of a point. It all comes with the with the uh, source code, or you have the the wiki. Uh, yeah, there are also more than two hundred examples uh, with uh, showing some some. Some tricks and for example using math checks is one uh one trick so you can uh, this text is formatted with math checks and it uh it updates the even the updated text is in in math check okay and of course alfred you mentioned the chase x graph book uh, which is very useful for beginners because you will find for every ex uh, for every object examples how to create circles, how to create segments or lines, uh, how to intersect objects as well. And uh, this uh, Chase X graph book is really useful for beginners. And uh, Andreas just post posted the link to this Chase X graph. Book from Igor Pesek. Yeah, and then another uh, source is uh, the the Google Group. There are also always helpful people. Uh, so if there's a more tricky question, uh, we have quite a few experts who who uh, are really helpful and and uh, and very patient and and. Uh, and help you doing stuff.